Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dynasty After Dark. I'm your host, Calvin Timms. I got my co-host, Dale, with me. You can find us over on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin at Dynasty underscore Dale. And I am excited because this month we are going to be releasing our off-season recap for all 32 teams. And, you know, you can watch these in any order, but the podcast is available on YouTube, Spotify, Google, Apple, anywhere that podcasts are found. While you're there, if you don't mind, just leaving a like, comment, so anything to help with the algorithm and, and getting this out to more people. Um, also, if you can, just tell the podcast to one of your friends. This is going to be a lot of content for you guys this month, so yeah, we're, we're just trying to get it out there to as many people as possible. But if you haven't checked any of them out yet, and this is your first one, well, thank you guys for joining us here. Go check out the other ones, if you don't mind, but... The way that we're going to be doing this is we're going to talk about the, you know, some of the major coaching changes first, then we're going to recap all of the free agents that they brought in, all the free agents that they lost this last um this last offseason, and then we're going to go through the draft as well. So Miami is who we're going to be talking about here today. Dale, how are we doing today? Hey, I'm doing really good. I am very excited to talk about my favorite team and I think they're mm-hmm. going to be uh AFC contenders this year. Yeah, we'll see. You guys missed playoffs last year, didn't you? No, we made the playoffs as the seventh seed, and we almost upset Buffalo with our third string quarterback. There you go. Yeah, it's see what happens this year. Yeah. All right. So that said, let's just jump right into it. Only major coaching staff change. So uh you know this team better than I do, but Vic Fangio, they managed to talk him out of retirement. Come be the the defensive coordinator. Massive change for this defense. This defense was kind of the worst piece of the team last year, it felt like. Um, So that's going to be interesting for the fantasy implications for this team. Mm -hmm. But they also got Wes Welker as the receivers coach. People love to talk about that like it matters. (laughs) Well, I think think it depends who you're talking to. I mean, I think if you have like a – have a – potential hall of famer as your as your as your position coach i think that is something to, something to talk about but uh-huh, uh-huh, sure sure yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh no it's not bad at all um i mean the problem is with these hall of famers man i don't think they they can always relate it to just because they could do it they they can't always uh understand why other people can't that but, is uh, true ah uh, so vic fangio again he's gonna he's gonna be a good addition to the defensive side of the ball you know, there's really not much for fantasy, except that I think that they're going to be a lot more competitive on the defensive side of the ball. And maybe that means that there's going to be less opportunities. Maybe they don't have mm-hmm. to be in as many shootouts. So maybe that's going to have a little bit of an impact on, you know, Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddle at the top. Uh, maybe it's going to boost some of these running backs a little bit more. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll talk about that here at the end. We're going to go through the coaching changes, free agents, um, draft, and then we'll talk about all the dynasty implications for the skill players at the end of the the podcast here. So um, free agent signings. We'll we'll go into those guys now. There was a lot. You know, they they had quite a few guys, and we'll talk about – we'll name them all, but we'll talk about the more important ones and and some of the impacts there at the end – so guys that they added this year, uh, cornerback, uh, they re-signed Nick Needham, um, re-signed cornerback Justin Bethel. They added uh, Dan Freeney, a guard from the New York Jets. They added linebacker David Long from Tennessee, uh, Andrew Van Ginkle. From, they re-signed him, um, re-signed Duke Riley, offensive line or offensive linebacker yeah that's that's a word outside linebacker yeah. <laughs> outside linebacker malik reed they signed him from pittsburgh um they added a punter Ooh, congratulations there we go replacing thomas morstead who they lost so quick spoiler there they did bring in mike white to be the quarterback the backup to tua which I actually like this yep. quite a bit um I do too. you know if tua can't stay healthy mike white showed a decent amount in new york so I like that. He's got no agreed. He's got no real value if two is healthy, but if he goes down, he could be he could be useful for sure. Something. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. So running backs, they re-signed Jeff Wilson, re-signed Raheem Mostert, 
Uh, Miles Gaskin, they re-signed him as well. So they brought back the entire running back room. All of them. Yep. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> um, uh, Deshaun Elliott, they signed him from the Jets or from the uh, Lions. He's a safety. Um, they brought over Isaiah Wynn from my New England Patriots tackle. They brought yeah. over Cedric Oguebu. He, I don't, I don't know how to say his last name. I apologize. Sure. Two tackles from division rivals. One from the Patriots. One from the Jets. You like to see Love that. Um, Jaron Christian. They brought him. They re-signed him as well. Um, they brought in tight end Eric Sobert from Denver. He's more of a blocker, if I remember right. Anyway, Tyler Croft. Um, He's a blocking type of guy anyway as well. Yep. A couple of wide receivers that they brought in, Braxton Berrios from the Jets with Mike White. Mm-hmm. Not a coincidence, I don't think, at all. Um, Robbie, chosen Robbie Anderson, whatever the hell his name mm-hmm. is anymore. Yeah, it's um, something. And R- River Craycraft. So those are all the guys that they brought in. Mm-hmm. Again, the biggest impact, I think, is a couple of offensive linemen. I like Isaiah Wynn a lot. I like Cedric Oguebihi. I don't I'm butchering his name. I forget how to say it exactly. Um, but yeah, I think that Vic Fangio and a couple of offensive linemen in Mike White are probably the most inf- impactful changes. Other than that, it, it wasn't a ton of Yeah, well I, I would I would say signing wise, yes. Yeah. I mean they did bring over some other players in trades. Mm-hmm. Um and that's what we're going to talk about here in a second. But, sure. um, you know, it, it was it was some substantial trades. Uh, you know, it was it was before the draft. Well, it was during the season with Bradley Chubb and then and then in the off season with uh, Jalen Ramsey. Um, oh, yeah. I forgot which the honestly, Ramsey trade. Yes, I forgot yes, about that one. Yes. yes good point. That, good point. I, I, I feel that's huge in the back end because they're going to lose uh, Byron Jones, which is a solid, a solid, uh, a, a solid cornerback three. Sure. Um, you know, I, I mean, I mean, they have like two, uh, like two of the top five uh, cornerbacks, in right. my opinion. <laughs> right. So, so, so I feel that helps. But you know, overall, I think they made a lot of good moves, and which is surprising for Miami because they're normally they're normally pretty uh, dumb on a lot of their signings. I'll be very <laughs> honest. Yep. I'll be, I'll be. I don't. I don't always have a lot of faith in this. Um. In this. Uh, Regime. regime well yeah. i mean i i yeah i have i have more faith in this regime but in past like with um mike tannenbaum who's on espn who's a doofus yeah um right. like pretty much ruined him but, but that's beside the point so yeah so yeah. dale mentioned a couple of them um you know byron jones cornerback left trill williams another cornerback they lost defensive tackle john jenkins um trey flowers is another defensive end that they lost uh, Michael Dieter is a guard that they lost. Alex Jensen, um, they lost linebacker Sam Webb. I don't, I'm not even gonna try again. Um, <laughs> Landon Roberts. They lost quite a few players on the defensive side of the ball that are, are bigger names, right? Um, Thomas Moore said a punter. Uh, they lost Eric Fisher at left tackle. This one is a little interesting. Yeah. I know he is not what he used to be. Um, but a couple other tackles, they lost Greg Little, Brandon Shell. They lost they lost safeties, Clayton Fajidinum. I have dude, these names are ridiculous. What is this? Eric Rowe. Uh, um, and then a couple of tight ends in Mike Gusecki, Adam Shaheen, and Kathleen Carter. This was pretty crazy, all the tight ends that they did lose. Yeah. And then Trent Sherfield yeah. at wide receiver. So you know, big name losses on the defensive side of the ball. I think Trey Flowers, he's not the best defensive end out there, but he is a good player. Um, again, a lot of, of good defensive guys that they let go out the door. But, you know, Trey Flowers hasn't signed with anybody, so they could always bring him back. But if Vic Fangio can get this defense rolling, I don't really think it's going to have too much impacts there. Um, so nothing crazy except for Mike Gusecki but it seemed like they did not want to use Mike Gusecki anyway um no in this offense so any other names that I'm I'm overlooking here I, I would say that's it which I mean I'm I'm a little surprised that of their lack of use of Gusecki because I thought he would fit pretty well into a I mean I, would, I don't want to say he's a kill type type right. because he's not a he's not a good blocker but sure. I mean he I mean I mean he's a good pass catcher sure which which I guess if you have track stars everywhere that can <laughs> right. catch the ball, 
you don't really need a big body tight end, I guess. Right. But yeah, so you know the the most interesting thing, and we'll we'll pivot quickly into the draft is they really didn't add many weapons, and they did not replace the tight end. The tight end is kind of rough right now, but mm-hmm. um, you know they did in round two. They traded their first round pick uh, to Denver again for whatever what the the um, Bradley Chubb trade. Bradley Chubb. Um, Cam Smith, the cornerback from South Carolina, they added him in round two. Devin Achain in the third round, running back from Texas A&M. He's the short guy. Then they didn't have another pick until the sixth round. Elijah Higgins, wide receiver out of Stanford. And then uh, offensive tackle in the seventh, Ryan Haynes out of Michigan. So not an oh. impactful draft. You know, only four picks mm-hmm. there. Um, a lot of names that left, a lot of names that, that kind of added as – undrafted free agents nobody really um noticeable we'll see if any of these guys even make the team but you know there's always sometimes mm-hmm. those one or two guys that are interesting that are undrafted guys but until they start to make splashes in in training camp there's really no point mentioning them there's so many guys yep. here so um all right so that said let's jump into the breakdown here and what we think of these players and we'll start at the top Tua, Tua Tagovailoa, how are we feeling about Tua going into 2023? I feel pretty decent about this year. Um, I think he, I think his head is in the game, I guess you could say. Um, it's, 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 it's for lack of a better phrase for him, but um, I, I, I think he's committed to this year. Um, I know there was a lot of talks about him potentially stepping away for health reasons, but right. um you know, which I, I understand, like, I mean, after you've had several concussions, you know, you kind of wonder what your, what your life after football is going to be. And, you know, that, that's something he's going to have to think about next year. But yeah, I, mean, I, I think for this year, especially, I think he's going to have another awesome year. Yeah. It, it's entirely possible that he had four concussions last year. And yeah. And then, and, and that's has, very, very scary. Yeah. That's very scary for yep. somebody. So are we it still, is. are we feeling good about Tua, you know, this is what scares me, and this concussion thing, mm-hmm. it, it's entirely possible that he never has another one. I mean, if people people probably don't remember. There's a lot of people out there that haven't been watching or paying that close of attention to, to fancy football for long enough. But DeAndre, um, De, or DeAndre, Devontae Adams, people forget that he had a scary couple of years where he was getting concussions like left, right, and center, you mm-hmm. know. I think it was like three seasons. He had three or four concussions. He had one every single year. And then there was one year that he had two, if I remember right. And people were like really concerned about Devontae Adams. And this was four or five years ago now where he hasn't had any ever since. Right. So it's entirely possible Tua never has another concussion, but, and with what we saw last year, it does scare me a little scary. bit. Um, now the talent yeah. is there. We saw it last mm-hmm. year when he's healthy and, and things are clicking mentally. The dude can deliver for fantasy football. Yep. Um, are we still believing in him? Or are you just kind of right not um, taking the I, risk I, with I the think, reward? I, I think, I think if as long as Teron Armstead is there mm-hmm. and, 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 and is his main protector, I think he'll be fine. Um, but there were splits where, where like when Miami, well, like when Armstead was out, Miami's offense didn't run as well. Right. So I, I think I think Tua's health, I think, is is just much in line in 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 his dynasty value with Teron with with uh with Teron Armstead's health. Right. So, so it's gonna, you know, I, I think I yes, it's going to rely a lot on the offensive line, essentially, right? Yes. So a hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. That's. It's just always scary, man. Un, 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 it is. It is, and you know, I think with the technology that they're that they're going to keep innovating the helmets and in the rules and different stuff sure. like that. To it's it's for player safety because that that is a huge thing that that they're going to have to look at because athletes are that much stronger and that much faster, right. you know, even than even a decade ago. So. Yeah, and the the good news is if you haven't been following, Tua has been learning judo, and that sounds kind of yeah. silly, but um, it's to all it, it's all to learn how to fall a little bit cleaner. Yep. Um, yep. So 100%. you know maybe he's not going to crack his head. We'll see if it translates to the actual NFL field whether he can kind of utilize it that way. But mm-hmm. yeah, he just 
there's so many times where he just got hit straight on. It's and just scary. Driven it's scary. Down, well, so. and, 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 and it doesn't help that he's a little bit shorter quarterback too. Right. So, I mean, that could all play a part into it, but I, I, I just, I, I mean, it, it is important for you to learn how to fall and to fall. Well, like, like there are quarterbacks that have really mastered that and they have really long careers, you know, True. you know, an example, like Aaron Rodgers, the Tom Brady's of the world that, you know, are, aren't, aren't going head on into, you know, these car crashes all the time. Yep. I'm with you. So, um, all right. And let's talk about Tua here. Let's go into yep. these running backs and we're going to talk about Devin Achain. You know, he's kind of the, the lead back that people are excited about right now. You know, they did re-sign Miles Gaskin. They re-signed Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson. All three of those guys are very, you know, Miles Gaskin's not old, but Raheem Mostert's in his 30s. Jeff Wilson, I mm-hmm. think, is 28 this year, yeah. if I remember yep. right. And then Miles Gaskin, I think he's like 26. So none of them are really in their prime. Devin Achain definitely has the ability to take over this backfield. But, you know... There's the size concerns of, and we talked about it a little bit with the Buffalo Bills, James Cook, right? He's the perfect prototype for Devin Achain. That De- James Cook is is 5'8", I think, and 203, somewhere somewhere mm-hmm. right around there, right? Achain is not that big. He's like 5'9", 190. So he's 10 pounds lighter than James Cook. And, you know, I do like the the ability of this coaching staff to really – get him involved like Mike McDaniel can put him in in very positive situations but mm-hmm. I think that there's no world where um Devin ever gets more than you know maybe 10 carries a game 10 touches a yeah. game and for fantasy football you know I've seen him going in the first round of rookie drafts I just I'm not that sold I think it's going to be a committee and unlike San Francisco where there's kind of always a leader of the committee I don't really see one for Dynasty here at, as much as people want there to be. Are your thoughts the same? Yeah, I agree with that. It is very, very murky. And, you know, I've been seeing, I've, uh, well, like, well, like even in best ball drafts, you know, I've, 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 I've been seeing the, I've, I've been seeing some of the Miami running backs go undrafted. Yeah. You know, yeah. Other, other, other than Achain. So, sure. you know, it's, it's, it's extremely murky, you know, like these guys are going to be, it's, it's the, it is the definition of running back by committee. Right. Um, so, you know, I don't really see anybody standing out. Um, I think Achain has a chance to be, I don't, I don't want to use, I don't really want to use the word relevant. I, I think he's going to be interesting some weeks. Like he's going to have a yeah. lot of, he, he, he's, he's going to have his boom week but he's definitely going to have his bust weeks. Yep. And, yeah. you know, I, I think for a player that some are thinking is going to be like a solid RB2, I think you have a lot of lot other better options at that point. Yep, I'm with you. So maybe best ball is the best place for Devin Onchain. But, Absolutely, uh, yes. Yeah, I think yeah. he's being overdrafted a little bit right now, and I'm a little concerned. So we'll see yeah. how it plays out this year. Now, wide receivers and I guess tight ends, we can kind of lump these guys together. Tight ends, there's nobody here that's even Mm-mm. relevant. Oh, no, no, um, no. So there's nothing really to even even talk about here. Um, like their their number one guy is probably Tyler Croft, who they signed as a free agent, right? Mm-hmm. And he's more of a blocking tight end than a pass catcher. So yeah. I think that this offense just does not utilize a tight end at all. And I think that, you know, they've drafted guys that they don't have to to rely on. Now, that might bite them a little bit because at least Mike Gusecki was a threat that mm-hmm. you get the ball in his hands and he can do things, right? But none of these guys are really even scary at all. So um, that might lead to a little bit more softer coverage on the tight end position, and they're kind of, you know, swing a lot more over to the receivers where they have two studs in Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell. But after mm-hmm. those two guys, you know, chosen Robbie Anderson, Braxton Berrios, um, Eric Azuka um, there's yeah. really nobody there that's even remotely interesting for the number three option. So mm-hmm. maybe that's where Devin Achain can see a little bit more usage yeah. as a slot guy, but it does make me well, a little nervous. Well, well, I, I, I think Freddie Swain's interesting. Like he was. Like he's from the Seattle Seahawks a couple years ago, and he was he was halfway relevant 
um, in in some games a couple years ago with sure. with you know I th- I think maybe that was one of the years that like DK just started or like right before DK Metcalf and they just had Tyler Lockett so mm-hmm. he can be somewhat I mean he could be that slot guy if if needed um, but I I think I'm I mean I'm really excited for Miami this year I think I think they have a lot of weapons mm-hmm. a lot of fast weapons that are going to be really scary for some defenses sure. but i'm not sure how i'm not sure how it's gonna i mean it's good for miami weather but i'm not sure how it's going to be in you know kansas city or cincinnati or you know like some of the northern cities <laughs> sure. where it's where it's where it's cold and that that's really down effective. a little bit right so yes yes it does. um it does. yeah no they're they're a good offense and they are very very quick so I guess for the wide receivers to wrap them up, you know, Tyreek Hill, still a very, very good player. Yep. Jalen Waddell, still a very, very talented player. Yep. Um, yep. I guess just watch at the beginning of the year if someone establishes mm-hmm. themselves as the number three option, whether it is Freddie Swain, whether it's, uh, you know, Braxton Berrios, Robbie Anderson, whoever that number three guy is, Cedric Wilson Jr., go and, and maybe go and throw an offer out for them quickly, you know, once they've kind of established themselves of a couple games in a row of the number three option, because there's a lot of potential there, um, again, with mm-hmm. no tight ends that are really going to be a threat. So uh, Miami is a very good team. Any last thoughts on, on them before we wrap it up? Nope. All right. That said, thank you guys for joining us again, if you can, on YouTube, Spotify, Google, wherever you're listening to podcasts, just leave a like, leave a comment, subscription, um, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you guys. We're going to be dropping content nonstop. If any breaking news comes out this off season, we're going to be releasing those in the afternoons. These are all morning. So yeah, we're going to be nonstop content all month of July. Let us know your thoughts, and if you're liking this content or anything that you'd like to change for next year, just hit us up down below and let us know. Until next time, thank you guys so much for listening, and good night.